Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Low Nose. Now today I'm gonna to explain to you how to do those little corner boxes in your video. You mean like this? Yeah, just like that. All right, up next. Uh, wait a second, that's my line. Nope, nope, it's uh, mine now. This freaking guy. Up next. All right, so I'm gonna start doing a series of different Vegas Pro videos to really give you an understanding of how to use a software and kind of better use it for the things you're trying to do. And this will be the first video, of course, on creating those little square boxes in the corner that you always see in gameplay footage or maybe uh, tutorial footage or just kind of video explainer videos. And um, there's, a, there's different ways to actually going about this, but for this explanation or this example, uh, I'm gonna do, we're just gonna use stock plugins because not everyone has a, a suite of plugins uh, to work with. Uh, and there are some plugins, plugins out there that will actually do everything from you. But like I said before, for really getting a better understanding of what Vegas Pro is all about, we're going to use the stock plugins. All right, so let's jump straight into it. Uh, first things first, keep in mind that whenever you're creating these videos, uh, usually you're going to be doing them within widescreen. So while you're, while you're recording in widescreen, you want to keep in mind to keep yourself kind of uh, centered within the footage as well. You don't want to run out. You don't want to run out too much within frame. Because right here, I, you see how I'm jumping out of here. Once we do the square, I'm going to be jumping out of frame. And usually, you're not going to put a widescreen video on these videos because it takes up a little too much real estate. And you want to focus on you. You want to get as close as possible to you to kind of show actually what you're doing. Um, and and that's the whole point. Okay. So first, first things first. We are going to. Um, we're going to mess with the event, with the pan and crop of the video. And when you do this, remember that when you do the, the, the pan and crop, this is going to affect the entire clip as well. So it, let's just say if you have like maybe a half an hour video, um, it's just going to be continuous. You want to start, it's going to affect the entire, entire video. So you don't want to go and do your edits like clip, 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 clip. And then all of a sudden, let's just say, all right, well, let me start. You do here and you adjust. Oops. You adjust and then when it gets to the next video, it's separately. So once you do it one to one clip, once you do it to one clip, it's gonna affect that entire clip. So make sure you do your cuts afterwards is what I'm trying to say basically. All right, so let me just undo all of this and let's get it started. Okay, so with that in mind, let us go to event pan and crop. We are going to select the four by three standard aspect ratio. And with this, what it does, it just kind of evens it out to four boxes because that's normally what you use um, for those kind of the, the clip boxes where you put yourself in. Now, let me give you a brief explanation what this locked aspect aspect ratio. What this does is it keeps the aspect ratio that you chose for for the video. So whether right now we chose four by three, it's going to keep this four-sided, four even squared box. If I were to go back to 16.9 widescreen, when I mess with the slider, everything, even though I pan in and I zoom in on it, it still keeps this aspect ratio. If I were to turn this off, I would lose the control of locking in the aspect ratio. And you can see it just kind of messes with it as I go. So let's lock it back in. Let me select four by three again. And now we are back locked into the, to the aspect ratio that we cho chose. All right, so this one, see size about center. Right now, whenever, whenever I zoom in or, or pan out, pan in, it's doing it from the center of the marker here. Everything happens, everything sizing happens from the center. This is the focal point of it. If I turn this off, then it's, it, 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 it finds an anchor point. It always takes the opposite anchor point of where you stretch. So if I were to, if I were to pull from here, this would be my anchor point. Okay, so it, everything stays from here because we took off the size about center. If I were to pull it from here, it's, it's it goes from there and that's the anchor point. Same thing if I want to top the bottom here, it's always the opposite point. So let's lock this back in. Let me go to my back to four, three, and we are ready to go. All right, so of course, once you you find you're happy with your aspect ratio, you lock in, you find the, the part of the video that you want to focus on. And of course, for this, we always want to focus on ourselves. Okay, and once we are happy with where we are, as far as the pan and crop, we can then save this point as well. So let's call this, let's call this pan test, pan test one, and then we will save it. And as you can see, like I showed you before, we have a couple presets 
uh, available for you, then you can create your own presets. These are some of my own presets that I've created as well. And the, the, these presets are for uh, when you move on to other projects or future projects, or maybe current multiple projects uh, within the session itself, uh, you can quickly go back to the same exact measurements you have right there without having to resize over and over again. This is a huge time saver. All right, so now that we have, have this here, now we are going to place our, we're gonna place our, our box to wherever we want on our video. Now for reference sake, this little clip here of my son and I playing some Minecraft. Okay, all right, so now I am going to go to track motion here. And now I can grab the box from the corner here and I can either shrink it or expand it. Grab it here from the edge and then click within the blue box and then bring it over to whichever corner you want. Of course, this will it's it's going to be up to you wherever the you never want the box in the focus or you don't want the box getting in the way of what you're actually doing, of what you're trying to describe. You're more of a complement to what's going on. All right, so go ahead, you know, the size on a size that's good for you and then you can place it there. Okay, so this, oh, I'm sorry, let me go right back. Let me go back to track motion, okay? And now once we are happy with our uh, our part there, we can go and call this, um, I'll call this track motion, whatever, track motion one, we'll save it there. And now it is set there forever. So if I want, if I wanted to, for example, if I restored everything, I can just go back to my track motion, track motion preset and boom, I'm racked right back there and I am ready to go. All right, and then yeah. So your video can just go out, you can you can render, you can do your you can do your cuts. You can do your cuts as uh as you see fit. And yeah. All right. Okay. So that's that's a really simple way, but a lot of times you'll see people do little fancy things. They'll probably have like fancy squares or some kind of thing around it. So let's go, let's go back to track motion. And there are several ways to kind of play with, um, you know, doing things with your box, kind of kind of like customizing your box, the way it looks. So I'll show you one way. So you can go back into the track motion folder. You can go to 2D shadow or maybe 2D glow, depending on what you want to do. But right now we're going to put a border around our box. We're going to 2D glow. And we are going to change the color of our box to white, the border of our box to white. Now you can see right here, change the box, but it's got a little bit of a soft uh, blur effect to it. So I'm gonna take the blur and I'm going to reduce it down to zero. Now I've got a solid box. Now if I like, and I actually have control and actually either make the box fatter or actually makes it smaller. It's up to you, but that's one way to put the border around your box. If you wanna put a shadow on it, then you can go ahead and you can press shadow and actually put a shadow on it, and you can adjust the uh, um, the intensity as well. You can be a bit of, it can be a bit of a blur shadow, or it can be of a solid shadow. It's up to you. So that's one way. Well, that's one way to do it. Uh, another way is there's a plugin called. Where are you? We're gonna we're gonna deal with nothing but Vegas effects. Vegas. There's another plugin called Layer Dimensionability. Okay, this will actually drop a shadow on the actual video itself. And boom, you can see, and then you actually choose your light source and kind of place it where you like. And then you have more play with, with what's going on as far as the shadow goes as well. Okay, you can play with that. And of course, there's a glow feature as well, if you ever wanted to mess with that. Okay, now if you want to get cute with uh, creating the borders within your... Did I delete it? Yes, I did. Now, if you want to get cute with creating the borders um, of your of your, of your box here, we can create another track, and we'll actually you can actually take a color or a texture, and you can put it behind the box that you created. And to make it easy, we're actually going to use the the presets that we did to make this box right here. We're going to use the colors. I'm sorry, we're going to use this the presets on the background color or texture that we choose to, uh, choose to use. All right, so let's create a new track. We're gonna throw it under our video track. And then for this example, we will go to media generators. And then we're gonna find a solid color. And we'll stick with the color white this time. I will put it under, okay. And I can go to my event pan and crop. And let's go ahead, what, what are you doing? Oh, event pan and crop. 
And let's go ahead and let's pick pan test, the preset that we made because we want, we basically wanted the same size or the same aspect ratio measurements of, of what we did. Ten, uh, time one, and then I will go ahead and I will borrow the track motion setting from the first video and then I will apply it to our solid white. Now it's gone because you can't see it. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna increase the size of it and then it'll pop up. It'll pop up right there, okay? And then if we like, when we actually got fancy, we actually drop down to this and probably the little opacity so it can actually be a little, a uh, little uh, clear through it so you can actually see what's going on under the actual white strip as well. Okay, now if you want to get even more cuter on top of that, let's go ahead and let's add some text. So we add a different track. We go to our media generators. We go to um, legacy text. And I will go ahead and put low nose. Okay. And I can put the placement right here if I like. Um, let me drop the size of the font. 26, maybe 28. Okay. Let's go a little bigger. Okay, yeah, sure, why not, 36. Let's place it right here so it looks like the name is a part of the outline. And I will change my, I will leave my text color as white. All right, and let's, let's change the outline to, no, no, you know what, I wanna do the other way around. Let's, let's make the color of my text black and let's make the outline white. I can go all the way to the top, that'll go straight to white. Okay, and then actually take the feather off, make it thicker, and there we go. Now it looks like my name is actually a part of uh, the actual thing. And if I want to drop a shadow, I could drop a shadow too. Yeah, but that's not, so, maybe maybe not an outline, maybe you just want a shadow alone. It's up to you. Okay. So you can do that as well. And also since, and also if you don't want to, low nose, and also if you don't want to keep on doing this every single time, you can go ahead, write down what it is and you can press save right there and is good to go. All right, so let's do a real quick example. We'll just do, we'll do everything again and we're gonna apply all of our presets. Goodbye, goodbye, video, explore, blah, blah, blah. All right, so let's get, here we go. I'll just go there. Here it is. I'm getting ready. I've got my, I've got my footage here, my game footage. Let me drag, let me bring in a white. Okay, I'll bring you into there. And to do this as quickly as possible, I am going to apply all of my presets There you go. And then I will throw you over here. There you go. And then we'll do the same thing for the white. And the track motion of it as well. Back and then we'll go ahead and increase. It looks good. And then we will go ahead and add our, our name on the top. Where are you? Low nose. And there we go, just like that. And it's all set uh, for any kind of future things that you may want to do. All right, that is it. Now, just keep in mind, remember, you don't have to use like a solid white or a solid color. If you have, you can download any kind of texture or um, gradient, and of course, just slide it into there and it'll just resize as well and just kind of customize your own background. Um, to make to make it look like any way you want. Um, there's also presets out there that actually give you, there's actually custom borders uh, you can download as well. Um, or you can actually create your own custom borders within Photoshop or whatever kind of um, photo editing software you, um, that you prefer and to create your own videos, but I'm sorry, to, to create your own borders um, and maybe your name as well. But it as far as just kind of bringing those elements within Vegas Pro. This is it, it's pretty simple. Um, it gives you a good idea of how to use some of the, um, the elements of Vegas Pro to just kind of do other things as well. All right guys, well if you found this video helpful, go ahead, leave a like, go ahead, subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. And if you found this helpful, or if you have any questions about this aspect 
of kind of creating, you know, the, the little box border within the corner of your videos. Like, well, what are those things called? Is there like an official name for that? I don't know. Whatever. Find out. L let me know in the comments below if you know what the official name is. Um, all right, guys. Um, I will catch you in the next video. Take care.